Get out there. Well, I finally got my tea laser to work after messing around for a couple of days. Um, turns out the big thing that was holding me up was this spark gap here. I had hooked up with the old clip leads, and there was just way too much induction there for it to work. As soon as I switched things over to the um, low induction spark gap model here, which I've got adjustable via this straw, things worked much more quickly. I had, I had lasing action nearly straight away. Uh, using a 100k resistor across the top there, I've gone with the LL configuration and it works. I'm running on 6 volts at the moment to my flyback transform which is in the oil bath. I usually run that one on 20 volts and I've had to turn it way 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 down and I've even added extra resistors to the resistor string back here. An extra 400 ohms there so it's turned way 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 down. And uh, that was 6 volts that it was just running on with the spark cap set fairly short. I'll now bump it up to 12 volts by putting two of these batteries in series. And there goes the dielectric again. That was fun. It's, um, as you noticed, the out laser output gets better as the spark gap increases. Well, let's have a look at what we've got there. Let's discharge things. There we go. Saves me getting zapped. And I'm looking at a bit less than that. It's only a very small spark cap required. Oops, that's probably not good for my calipers. Probably somewhere in the vicinity of three millimeters there. Three to four millimeters on that spark gap. And this dielectric is popping out. Uh, what I've ended up settling for, best value for money and good thickness, was these A4 laminating pouches. You can see there, they're 80 microns thick per side, and I'm only using one side. The base foil is in between two layers. Um, probably a bit wasteful there, it does tend to blow out the bottom layer as well when it pops. I should probably slice them off separately and just use one at a time. Um, and yeah, they're nice and cheap. I got 25 for $7, as opposed to the um, overhead printer transparencies, which are possibly tougher. I'm about to try one of them next. Um, they're 100 microns thick, so a little bit higher inductance on your capacitor. And um, they're a dollar each at the local copy shop, so a lot more expensive. Seven dollars, I get seven of those, or 25 of these, and if I only use one side at a time, I get 50 of these. So I know what I'll be getting next time. And also, I have did some testing around, and two layers of this makes a great high voltage capacitor for Tesla coils and stuff. I could set my spark gap a good inch apart, and it wasn't blowing out two layers of this laminating pouch stuff. So there you have it, that's a quick overview of my um, laser, T laser, which I've been playing with for a bit. Um, I will be doing some more experiments with that coming soon, including putting a laser, a mirror, sorry at, one, sorry, at one end and trying to reflect the beam back through and make it more intense. I might play around with using a solar panel to measure its intensity. Um, and I've also got this crazy contraption which I want to try out, which is my old um, CO2 generator. I put bicarb soda in the bottom there, and I put vinegar in the little syringe, which is just stuck through the lid, and um, 
and then I can inject the vinegar into the bicarbonate soda and we all know what happens, we get CO2 gas come out and it's got a little nozzle I'm made with heat shrink and I'm going to mess around with squirting some CO2 which is a heavy gas and will sink to the bottom across the lasing gap I may even enclose things and see what happens and I might be able to get a nice hot infrared burning laser out of it never never know unless you never try unless you try so that's what I'm up to for the next couple of days hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching